Hello, my name is Jason Soddenkamp, and I just completed weeks three and four at Code Platoon. During week three, we talked about data structures such as queues and stacks, binary search trees, and hash tables. We covered recursion and then understanding big O notation. In week three, day four, we were able to get our first look at HTML and CSS, um, which kind of changed the pace of the course for me. Um, you know, I, I learned that using HTML and CSS, you can really use your imagination and create really anything that you want is, you know, and, and, and to me, that's that that uh, that's a lot funner for for me and uh, gives me that motivation to to want to learn more. So in uh, previous videos, I've um, just kind of talked to you. So I want to share my screen to kind of go over that that project that we had. So in this um, project, we were to come up with 10 of our favorite elements in HTML and create a single page website that showcases that. So what I did was, is, you know, on our Slack channel in, in Sierra Platoon, we have a memes channel um, where we can just kind of post whatever memes that we want. A lot of times the memes that are posted are kind of relevant to what we're going over in class, with the exception of a few. When grandma refuses the later skater, that was a fun little assignment that we had. Um, I believe it was in, in JavaScript and Python. Um, yeah, so this is that page. And it's just using um, a slideshow, um, some internal links to uh, a form where a user could enter their email address, their name, and then if they had any questions, they can send an email. And as you can see, we're, you know, I, I utilize the hover on a lot of these. Um, I got some external links. Um, I don't have a Twitter, but if I did, I would go there, um, a LinkedIn page. And then, uh, you know, um, but anytime you go to the home page, that's a frequently asked questions, which I just use that as an example to create some elements for a frequently asked questions, just using instead of, um, you know, just some random language. I just chose high Valerian because I'm a Game of Thrones nerd. Yeah, so um, HTML and CSS was, was really fun. Um, day five of week three, we went over the requirements for our second assessment. And then we were given the weekend to work on it. I will say that um, it was a it was the same level of, of difficulty as the first assessment, it just in a different way. Without going too much into it, um, I, I learned a lot. What I what I have been learning a lot of is how to research, how to use Google to, to find the answers that I'm looking for. And on these assignments, you know, everything is is um, open source. So whatever you can find, uh, you can use again with the caveat stating that you, you know, you don't want to just cut, copy and paste something without understanding how your code works. So um, do do some research. Um, there's also every every lecture is recorded, so you can always go back onto YouTube and reference any of the lectures uh, for that week, for that day. Um, so yeah, uh, week three was really fun, and um, moving on to HTML and CSS really you know motivated me because you know again that's your your chance to be creative. And, uh, and showcase your work and yeah. So um, week four, we cover a more in-depth view of HTML and CSS. Uh, we learned uh, Bootstrap uh, on Monday, which is a free open source CSS framework dedicated um, res responsive mobile first front end um, web development. And this, uh, this is de developed actually by Twitter um, it contains CSS and, and JavaScript based design templates for such as forms, buttons, navigation, other uh, interface components. Um, really, to put Bootstrap in its simplest of forms, um, the developers did all the hard work for us. Is really, I, from what I've seen of Bootstrap, if you know how to cut, copy, and paste, you can get a front end web page up that looks great in just a matter of a few hours. <clears throat> So um, to kind of showcase that work, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, uh, first thing I'll kind of go over is, you know, they showed us the doc section of uh, the Bootstrap uh, website, uh, you know, it has a 
a number of components, but essentially um, the website that I created that I'm going to show you, there was really only a few things that I added to it. Uh, the rest was just a cut, copy and paste. And um, the, uh, the, you know, Bootstrap does everything else for you. So I created this carousel. Um, I like pictures. Um, I like art. So kind of showcasing that. So in, in this, the uh, I added uh, a carousel element and then um, a few photos down here that when you hover over them, it changes the opacity. I I um, I did that piece uh, with HTML and Java, or, uh, CSS, um, but everything else is really just done in in Bootstrap. Aside from you know the the text in this uh, carousel, I had a lot of fun with Bootstrap. Uh, it's being able to see the power of Bootstrap really, you know shows you what you can do and what you're able to do in, in very little time, just understanding how to work Bootstrap. Yeah, so the next thing we covered was the DOM. Uh, the DOM is doc Document Object Model, which is a programming interface for web documents. It represents the page so that the program can change the document structure, style, and content. So again, I'll, I'll share my screen and kind of go over a um, something that we created when we went over the DOM. So we, uh, we the assignment was to create a number guessing game um, where you generate a random number between one and 100. The user enters the number. And then one of the, the, um, the things that it had to display was one, the numbers that the, the user had already guessed and then if they need to guess higher or lower, and then when they win, obviously. So um, if we just inspect, because I did a, a console log, every time we generate a number, it'll tell us here. So we know that the number is three. So if I guess 10, it'll showcase that number that I've already guessed and then tell me to guess lower. If I guess one, Okay, it's going to showcase the number again and then tell me to guess higher. And then when I guess the correct number, you win. And then it also changes that whole element. So this was a pair programming assignment that we worked on. This isn't something that I just created. Um, we worked on this as a team. And I will tell you this, working with other people in your class um, really it helps me out a lot because you get the chance to see how other people code or how they arrive to a solution to the problem, um, which again is something that you can use because um, you see how somebody else codes. So it's like, well, next time I do that, I think I'm going to try and try and implement that that way of of doing it, which you know to me is great. And then being able to work alongside with people that are that may be struggling just as much as you feel you are, um, it really gives you a, a perspective on where you're at too. So that you you may feel like you're behind in class or maybe you feel like you're ahead of everybody. And, but pair programming, it's a good, uh, a good way of, of learning quite a few different things and ways to arrive at a solution to a problem just by seeing other people code. So I've really enjoyed that, being able to work with other folks. Um, the next thing we covered was APIs and um, uh, AJAX. So to me, APIs was probably the funnest assignment that I've worked on so far. Uh, API is an application uh, program interface. It's basically where you can go to a website and and uh, do a, a, a request, and then they send you back a response. So with I, I don't like to show our code, but I'll, I'll show you kind of what I'm talking about. Um, so one was a Pokemon. So the the assignment was we were to create a website using a this Pokemon API uh, where we dis display an image, 
uh, the name of a Pokemon. And, you know, with this API, it kind of shows us how to request it. So we're going to this Poke API. Um, if we want a Charizard, you know, this shows us some information about Charizard. Um, it shows us the, the artwork if we want it. So drilling down to the sprites, other official artwork, and then front default. So if I, if I go to this website here, it should display a picture of Charizard. There we go. So with the program, so we 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 got this uh, this this single page here. This uh, this other Pokédex is something that I worked on aside from uh, this assignment. But using the DOM and API, I was able to create this this single website where I can type in. Um, any character by their character number or Pokemon number. I don't really know that not much about Pokemon, but uh, and then hit search. It has a few things for us, so it tells us that you know uh, the height, the weight, the number, the base XP for this uh, Pokemon, and then the type is grass. If you notice, another thing that it did was is it changed this search icon to like a like grass, if you will. We go back there, Barbara's eye, um, two, so 100, an electric type here. I think there's 905 on this, and it has a little fairy type. So and then you can also check by name. It goes back to Charizard. So this was this is really fun. It kind of just shows you the power of an API and kind of lets you know that there are a ton of different things that you can do using API um, and then um, uh, Ajax to request that and uh, get a response on those APIs. So it's super fun learning about that. Um, Another thing that we covered um, the last day of week four was um, Django, which we, our assignment was to create a just a really simple uh, uh, website using Django as our backend server. So um, week four, we're going to get more into the backend of things. So I'm super excited about that, learning more um, and just just know, just seeing all the different things that we can do as as web and um, application developers is is so exciting to me. I, I love it so far. Um, in the first couple of weeks, you know, I was a little nervous because of the tempo of the course, but everything is so um, so much. There's so much repetition that you know, and so much help from the the TAs and from the instructors and other students that. If you're behind, you just you just ask a question. You let somebody know, and you're going to get caught up really quick. So the pace of the course is very fast. Um, you're learning something new, some a new technology every day, and and new ways to implement those technologies. So it's it's um, and it's doable as long as you you know you have that desire to want to finish uh, and keep going. So I have a, I had a lot of fun in week three and week four. Um, look forward to the, you know, the coming weeks and I will make sure that I um, post more videos coming up. Thank you.